physical challenges are any continuing conditions that restricts an individual from everyday activities. This results to restriction on an individual's ability to participate in what is considered normal in the everyday activities in the society. Physical challenges are the limitations on a person's physical functioning, mobility, stamina, blindness, epilepsy, and sleeping disorders. In our case study, we visited Salvation Army Joytown Secondary School in Thika, which handles physically challenged students. Joytown Secondary School was founded um, sometime in 1980. Um, it came about as a realization that um, the students from Joytown Primary School, which is our sister school, um, could not fit very, very comfortably in um, normal schools. Normal schools being the regular schools, the regular secondary schools. And by that we mean, you know, schools that um, at that time didn't have facilities that would accommodate uh, students with physical challenges. Therefore, the sponsors of the school, that is the Salvation Army, and the Ministry of Education, and the stakeholders at the school, and also the community, um, found it necessary to establish a secondary school that would be ideal for handling uh, persons with uh, physical challenges. J-Town accommodates students of various physical challenges. Our specialty is uh, are students with physical challenges um, arising from uh, cerebral palsy, um, paraplegia, paraplegia meaning, you know, unable to use any, any of the upper and lower limbs, um, post-polio uh, cases, um, uh, some are congenital, you know, born, you know, with disability. Uh, we wouldn't actually say a particular category, but th that inability for them to use um, uh, to use their, um, the, the motor skills based on uh, maybe the, the legs may be weak, the, the upper limbs may be weak, um, paralysis. We also have uh, cases of uh, post-operation um, post amputations, uh, dwarfism, several of these uh, categories. Uh, basically, uh, those who are considered as physically inhibited in um, in normal activity that's uh, we would say that's our category what really is the actual cause of physical challenges you would be surprised that I might say my child is disabled and was cast but if you really understand the causes of disability and especially physical disability you will probably realize that you as a parent actually caused that disability. No. So the, the, the chances of you getting to learn and understanding that I was at fault, probably the disability would not have been there. Uh, a, a good example, cerebral palsy is, is, a, is, a, is a disease, or is a, it's not a disease really, it's a condition that develops because of delayed uh, you know, prolonged child labor. So if, if you have such a situation, um, you'd find that the child who is born will be born with cerebral palsy. Um, but whose fault is it? Is it the child? Is it the community? Is it someone who looked at you badly in, in, in your neighborhood? Is it, is it the family line? No. It's just, it's just something that happens, that uh, there was a delay between labor and when the child was born. And that led to less oxygen getting to the brain of the child, and therefore leading to the development of cerebral palsy. 
other instances are probably when the mother was pregnant, there was medicine she took that caused the poor development of the child or the fetus. So it's not about what we have believed. It's about understanding what happened, what was the cause of this polio, for instance. We've been seeing all these all these stories about vaccination. You probably didn't take your child for vaccination on time. It was not the community's fault. It was not a curse. It was not your neighbor um, not looking at your child nicely. It is just a mistake that took place, and probably you are responsible as a parent. So, and what is the take of the society? It is our society. We, we must realize it is our society. Uh, one time I conducted, uh, I participated in, um, in um, the population, the national population census that takes place every 10 years. And I, I went to, to enumerate a, a family that I was aware had a child who was challenged. And I kept asking that question that you're supposed to ask. How many children are there here? And they would count all the children except the one who is physically challenged. Until I said, no, I need to see everyone who sleeps in this house, whether, uh, you know, I kept insisting because I knew that they were not going to divulge that information. So it is a challenge. And even um, making someone accept something they have probably um, ignored throughout their lifetime or throughout the lifetime of a child who is physically challenged is not easy. Though majority view them as disability cases, these children have risen beyond the limits. For instance, they compete in national exams just like the regular children. The organizers don't understand that. The curriculum doesn't really address those, those needs. So, at the end of the day, the examination is still the KCSE, done by everyone. And therefore, the challenge is now posed. It is at the doorstep of NEC. Can we have special exams? When it comes to games and sports, these children are not left behind. They too have got talents and gifts. Talent. They are gifted. Uh, they are probably more gifted than the ones we would because it's amazing the kind of talents that they have. Um, there's one who can really draw you the way you are. There's one who he didn't have hands but he was able to make a portrait of the former president. Okay, these are some of the past presidents. Uh, up here we have Moi Kibaki, he is Raila, Baba, they call him so. <laughs> and this is um, our president right now, Kenya mm -hmm. But down here I don't know who he is, because most of the pictures here are from a long time. This is from early, the school started early in 1980. Yeah. So some of the children are very old. We have a team for amputee footballers. Yes. And it's, it's amazing. We have students who play long tennis on wheelchair. We are the champions of city volleyball in Kenya. So we, we have programs. We have um, daily programs of activities and it's not just school and school only. Of course, being a school, you'll have the normal learning cycle. But we do have games, we do have uh, club activities, just like in any other school. And we do have a day when they will, they will be out for games. Um, and that's when we, we, we get to experience the same. <clears throat> On Saturdays, we have uh, entertainment. And it is programmed entertainment. It's not just sitting in front of, uh, they call it the idiot box or the TV and watching television. Our students rarely do that. They take it upon themselves to either dance, 
they will take part in Sakata just like any other student. They will uh, perform uh, traditional dances, uh, they will perform comedy shows. The children face a lot of challenges, both academically and physically. Yeah, there are several, you know, several challenges you do face. Um, like one, you know, this is a special school. So the way you, treat, you can't treat everybody, you must be fair. You have a lot of challenges. There's a person in the wheelchair. This person needs all, all the, the others are very special. They need very delicate, they are very delicate. You, you may quarrel someone and uh, they, they, some of them have a, have a condition that you can quarrel him and he just fends down and it becomes a problem. So when you're dealing with the students, you, you, you must be fair to all of them and be very careful. That's, that's one of the main, main, main problems we do face in the counselors. Here we have students who, do, who have a celebrity oppressive. During their practicals, they really suffer because celebrity oppressive it, 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 it's an it's a illness that affects the mind, that triggers the mind. In a say that the, that person always shakes. So you can imagine in a practical, he's shaking and uh, those, those apparatus. So some of, and also in mathematics, there's construction. So if the government can intervene and also the, the, the examination board to consider them while they're preparing the examination. Also, they're, they're marking, their writing is not the same of the regulars. So when they're writing the exams, I don't, I don't think it should be marked as the same because we are marked the same as the others. So it becomes a challenge to them. There is really no special um, way you could, um, you could look at it. And uh, for us, what we try to do is because the system has not really changed, we try the very best that we can to make them feel that they are part of that, uh, that same, same system. And we make them, we try to inculcate values that they too can compete at the same, same level as any other child at their age or at their level of education. So it's, uh, we wouldn't say we have any special, um, uh, special considerations that is, that is done for them. Uh, the only thing we've been able to do is maybe advocate or have advocacy programs with some of the universities and tell them, okay, um, you need to look at us differently because we are achieving at, the, at almost the same level as the national schools or in any, or any other institution. But the realization is that um, you, you know, we require to be uh, to be considered and in certain cases um, we found that uh, the, the national universities have tended to lower the, the entry the entry points for uh, students with uh, physical challenges from the normal B B minus to, to a C plus and some of them will have particular courses where they they would uh, pro probably require um, uh, students with uh, disabilities to, to join. The children receive support from the government, especially the Ministry of Education. Um, the Ministry of Education is, is a big player in, 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 in the management of the school. Um, the members of staff, all members of staff, whether they are teaching or non-teaching, are ideally um, remunerated by the government so personally I am I am I serve here under the teacher service commission and my colleagues serve under the teacher service commission um, the workers uh, are paid uh, by grants provided by the Ministry of Education so we have several other partners they, they come at individual levels they come even as organizations we even have organizations, international organizations, that also partner with us, uh, either by providing um, facilities, putting up some of the structures you've seen around. Um, none, none smaller than even His Excellency the President. I'm sure the other day you saw it in, in the news that uh, he donated a, a bus to this school. The Students' Council works hand in hand 
with the school management to ensure conducive environment. As a student board council, we are 35 of us, I being included. Um, our main work is just to ensure everything the school runs smoothly and uh, to create that uh, relationship between the teachers and the students. We are the, the bridge between the, stu the students and the teachers. Uh, the, the, there is a counseling we undergo, the leadership, go under, we undergo leadership skills. Now we are trained there, like now we are, we are started our starting on last Saturday and we are continuing, it continues for around one month. Then now you, you, are, you are now qualified to deal with the students. Yes. Yeah. To, to, to try to balance all those, you must be fair. Okay, for instance, you may, the, the, the teachers may disagree on what the students are saying. But at least at the end of the at the end of that that case, you should come up with a with a, with a solution to it that all 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 all, all, all both the two parties are agreeing to. So it will be fair. It will be more fair. Even if you have, have you have not done what they decided, at least you have you have done something that both of the parties have come to an agreement and they have said it's okay. Now let's go for that. Yeah. Whenever disciplinary cases arise, they too are not spared. But how is discipline administered to them? We will make them wipe tables after lunch. We uh, will ask them to move some. Some uh, we could ask them to move that soil and you know deliver it to a place where it's needed. We could ask them to slash the grass if they can. We expect them to own up to their mistakes. And secondly, then they will write an apology of which will be filed in your in your school file you could you could give them tasks like writing about maybe what they have what they have done something to make them realize that whatever they did was not correct and it needs to be faced and of course when the worst comes to the worst then we send them home and ask them to report with the parents and we have a discipline committee that sits and interrogates the entire process and mets out the appropriate punishment as long as there is that, uh, that relationship. The other part is that uh, we have a very strong guidance and counselling team. Very, very strong guidance and counselling team. So even after the entire process has been exhausted, we will still send the child to the, to the, to the, uh, to the guidance and counselling for, for there to be closure, so that now they can understand you have come out from that whole situation. The institution partners with various stakeholders for its smooth running. The workers are remunerated through a grant that is provided by the Ministry of Education. But over and above that, we receive funds from um, our sponsors, individuals, individual sponsors who sponsor the students in terms of fees and uh, some of them do sponsor uh, the students for their personal upkeep. So very, very many generous uh, partners. Uh, that bus is actually a donation by the, the Safaricom Foundation. Um, they came here, they discovered that uh, we had an old van, we wouldn't be able to, to take students on, um, on expeditions, we couldn't plan for trips out. Um, we, sing not, we sing not only at the zonal level, no school beats us at the zonal level, no school beats us at the county level. And we end up, we always end up at the National Music Festival. But that's the kind of transport we had to take them. Sometimes we had to hire. So they felt that now we need to give them a bus. And we are even as lucky because the president has also donated another bus to us. How should the society approach this dilemma concerning children with physical challenges? Everyone has their own purpose. There is a reason why God gives you the kind of child that you have, disabled or otherwise. My statement is always that all of us are disabled. 
The moment you look at that, then you realize then that it's just God's way of saying, I have given you this kind of child. What would you do if it were you? So give them an opportunity. Give them an education just like any other. So give them an opportunity. Actually do the responsibility of being a parent that God has given you. It was not your will. It probably is not in your capability to change the situation, but that's the way it is. So don't hide them. Bring them out. Give them as much chance as they need. And you'll be surprised. Some of them have ended up being top people in this country. And you never know. Our next president will probably be one who is able differently. Disability is not inability. All of us have got our own weaknesses and strength.